Hello, everybody. Welcome to Israel's Church of Living God. I'm Brother Rodney, and Brother Caleb will be uh, reading today. We'll be doing a lesson today entitled Workers of the Vineyard. Workers of the Vineyard. Because that's what we all really are uh, when we start or uh, say that we're going to do something in the church, a job or office or whatever you, or whatever have you in the church. That's what you really are. You're working in the vineyard. So, um, you know, I don't want to make this seem like that I'm talking about you no know, one somebody or a certain camp or none of that because this applies to all of us, to all the camps, because we all are one body and we all are one church. So I'm going to start this lesson off, though, in 2 John, the third verse. I'm going to start this lesson off in 2 John, the third verse, and, I'm going to, and I started here for a reason. I started here for a reason. 2 John, uh, uh, the third verse. Go ahead and read that. <coughs> Grace be with you, mercy and peace from God the Father. Uh, let's say, Grace be with you, mercy and peace. From God the Father. Go ahead. And from the Lord Jesus Christ, uh -huh. the Son of the Father. Uh -huh. In truth and love. In truth and in love. And that's what this is like, lesson is about. This lesson is not about to, you know, about me or preaching about somebody and what they're doing wrong and all this. This lesson is done in truth and in love. Because all of us can stand some reproof. All of us can. Um, let's go to Luke the second chapter. Luke the second chapter. Luke 2, and we're going to pick it up at verse 49. Luke 2 and 49, and uh, look at what Jesus said. Now, if Jesus said this at his age, then we being grown men and, and everything, we should be about the Father's business ourselves. Luke 2 and 49, Luke 2 and 49. Look at what he told his uh, mother and father when they were looking for him. They found him. What did he say? Go ahead. And he said unto them, how is it that ye sought me? Uh huh. Wish not that I must be about my father's business? He said, you know what? Why are y'all looking for me? He told his mother and father. He said, why are y'all looking for me? You know, uh, don't you know I got to be about my father's business? And this is the Lord telling you this at age like 12 years old. He's telling his parents this. So we being grown folks, we should know that we ought to be about our father's business. We should be about our father's business. Let's go to John, the fifth chapter. John 5, and we're going to pick it up in verse 17. John 5 and 17. Because that's what working in the vineyard is all about. You being about the father's business. But, you know, God, he works. Jesus, he works. And so we are to work. We can't just come to church and sit around and do anything or just do nothing. We have to work in the church just like the Father working, just like Jesus is, Jesus is working. John 5 and verse 16. John 5 and 16. Go ahead and read it. And therefore did the Jews persecute Jesus and sought to slay him. Because he had done these things on the Sabbath day. So you know he had killed somebody on the Sabbath day. And so they, they, they looking to kill him. But we ain't, we ain't come here for that. Keep reading though. 17. <clears throat> uh-huh. But Jesus answered them, My father worketh here too, uh -huh. and I work. He said, My father worketh here too, and I work. So the God worked, and, and Jesus works too. Yes, and who did that work? Their work is uh, dealing with men. Dealing with men. And so they are working, aren't they? Keep reading. Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him, uh -huh. because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his father. Now look, they say he broke the Sabbath, but how did he break the Sabbath when the book said he is without sin? So he didn't break the Sabbath. That's what they think, because they don't know who they're dealing with. Go ahead and read though. Yes, sir. But said also that God was his father, making himself equal with God. Uh -huh. Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, 
The son can do nothing of himself. See, he said, I can, the son can do nothing of himself. Go ahead. But what he see if the father do. Uh-huh. So the father is doing this, right? Through Jesus. But they both working, though, aren't they? Go ahead and read. For what things soever he doeth, uh -huh. these also doeth the son likewise. Uh -huh. For the father loveth the son, and showeth him all things that himself doeth. Uh -huh. And he will show him greater works than these that ye may marvel. He said he's going to show him greater works than these that ye may marvel. So my point is, is that they both are working, aren't they? Amen. They both working. So we, as the servants of God, we're supposed to be working too. And that's what working in the vineyard is all, all about. You do a service for God. You're not doing it for, set first say, Israel's church of the living God. You're doing this for God. You take care of his business. Let's go to John, the 14th chapter, John 14. I want everybody to understand that because, you know, we get into our personal feelings and everything. And, you know, and we uh, uh, say we're going to do something in the church, but then as we get into our feelings, then now we don't want to do it. But then you made that vow to God, though. You ain't make it to me. You didn't make that to, to man. You made that vow to God. John 14 and 8. John 14 and 8. Go ahead and read it. Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it suffer, suffice of us. Uh -huh. Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me? Uh -huh. so, so he ain't telling Philip that, uh, Philip that he is God, or that he is the Father. He tell him, look, the Father works through me. So when you see me, you see in the Father. Go ahead and read. He that have seen me, that have seen me, have seen the Father. Uh -huh. And how saith thou then? Show us the Father. Why? Because the Father is working through him. Right? They are one when it comes to thought or doing or working. They are one. Go ahead and read. Believe thou not that I am in the Father. See, he said, believe not that I am in the Father. That's one, that's another thing, ain't it? Go ahead and read. In the Father in me. Uh-huh. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself. Go ahead. But the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. See, the Father that dwelleth in me, he does the works. He just doing the works through Jesus, though. Go ahead and read. Believe me that I am in the Father, uh -huh. and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. He said, believe, or else, you know, you don't believe in the Father, believe me for the very work's sake. Look at the works that I'm doing. We're going to show you that the works that he done. Verse 12, go ahead. Verily, verily, I say unto you, uh -huh. he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. Uh -huh. And greater works than these shall he do. Because I go into my father. Now, so let's go now. Let's go to uh, let's go to uh, 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 Matthew 11 chapter. Let's look at some of these works that Jesus done. Matthew 11. I just want to, want you to see that you know God is not just sitting in heaven. Jesus is not just sitting in heaven. They they working. They are working. Because Jesus even told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I'm gonna come again and receive you unto me. To where I am, you're gonna be also. But he said, I'm going to prepare a place for so he up there working. Matthew 11 and 2. Matthew 11 and 2. Go ahead and read. Now when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ, uh -huh. he sent two of his disciples and said unto him, Art thou he that should, should come, or do we look for another? Uh -huh. Jesus answered and said unto them, Go and show John again those things which ye do here uh -huh. and see. Go ahead. He said, you know, uh, go and tell, show John uh, uh, again of those things which you do and hear and see. Go ahead. The blind receive their sight. Now look, look at the works that he's doing. He said the blind receive their sight. Who gave them their sight? God did. But he used Jesus to do it though, didn't he? He said, the blind receive their sight. Go ahead. And the lame walk. Uh-huh. The lepers are cleansed. And the deaf hear. The dead are raised up. 
and the poor have the gospel preached to them. Uh huh. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. So now, so look at all these works that he's doing. And then the Bible tells you in uh, John, uh, the last book, it tells you in the last verse, many other such things he done that all the books in the world can contain all the things that he have done. So he was working while he was here, wasn't he? While he was walk on, on, walking on the earth. So look at the works that he done. He said, look, the blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised up. That's a big one right there. <laughs> and the poor have the gospel preached unto them. That's another big one right there. The, the poor had the gospel preached unto them. Now this took some work, didn't it? This took some work. And these are the works of Jesus. Now look, Jesus don't, we, we all don't have the same works that we got to do. God give us all talents to do whatsoever he wants us to do. And, it's, and we are working for, and remember, we are working for God. We're not working for men. We're working for God. Let's go to Psalms, the 80th chapter. Psalms 80. Psalms 80. Because who is Jesus working for? He was working for the Lord, didn't he? He said, I come in the volume of the book. It is written to me to do thy will, O God. So he's doing the work for the Father. Let's go to Psalms 80, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Psalms 80 and 1. Go ahead and read it. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel. Uh huh. Thou that, that, that leadeth Joseph like a flock. So we're going to come back to the works in a minute. But we're going to bring Israel on the scene. We're going to bring Israel on the sea. So he said, Thou leadest Joseph like a flock. Go ahead. Thou that dwellest between the cherubims, shine forth before Ephraim and Benjamin and Manasseh. Stir up thy strength and come and save us. Uh -huh. Turn us again, O God, and cause the face to shine, and we shall be saved. Cause thy face to shine, and we shall be saved. Skip down to verse 7. Go ahead. Turn us again, O God of hosts, and cause thy face to shine, and we shall be saved. Uh huh. Thou hast brought a vine out of Egypt. Thou hast brought a vine out of Egypt. We got to find out what does it mean that thou hast brought a vine out of Egypt. What is this vine? What is this vine that he brought out of Egypt? Read that again. Can you get that monitor on? Turn us again, O God of hosts, and cause thy face to shine, and we shall be saved. Uh -huh. Thou hast brought a vine out of Egypt. Go ahead. Thou hast cast out the heathen and planted it. He said, Thou hast cast out the heathen and planted it. Thou hast brought a vine out of Egypt. What is this vine that he has brought out of Egypt? Let's go to Isaiah, the fifth chapter. Isaiah 5. He said, Thou hast cast out the heathen too, didn't he? Now that's what he did. He cast those uh, the Canaanites out and brought up Israel and put Israel in the land. Isaiah 5, and we're going to pick it up at verse uh, 1. Isaiah 5 and 1. What is this vine that he brought up out of Egypt? Go ahead and read. Now will I sing to my well beloved a song of my beloved touching his vineyard. Uh huh. My well beloved have a vineyard in a very fruitful hill. My beloved had a my beloved have a vineyard in a very fruitful hill. Skip down to verse 7. Who is this vineyard? Go ahead. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel. The vineyard of the Lord of hosts is who? The house of Israel. The house of Israel. Go ahead and read. And the men of Judah, his pleasant plant. Uh-huh. And his and he looked for judgment. But behold, oppression. Go ahead. For righteousness, but behold, a cry. But we, this is that vine that he brought up out of Egypt right here. The house of Israel. This is who, this is who we're dealing with. The house of Israel. And he said he cast out the heathen. Who's that heathen that he cast out? It was the Canaanites. Kicked them out of the land and gave the land to the children of Israel. So this is the vine that he brought up out of Egypt. It was the house of Israel. Let's go to Exodus now. Let's go to Exodus, the 35th chapter. Exodus 35. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Exodus 35 and 1. Because Israel is his chosen people. 35 and 1. Go ahead. 
And Moses gathered all the congregation of the children of Israel now together. Look, now look what he called them. The congregation of Israel. And that's what we are. We are the congregation of Israel. All of us. We are the congregation of Israel. I know you got this brother over here. He got a church over here. And this brother got a church over here. And the name of this church is this. And the name of the church is that. But we all are the congregation of Israel, though. Go ahead and read. <clears throat> the congregation of the children of Israel together uh -huh. said unto them, Go ahead. These are the words which the Lord hath commanded that ye should do them. Six days shall work be done. But on the seventh day there shall be to you a holy day, uh -huh. a Sabbath of rest to the Lord. Uh -huh. Whosoever doeth work therein shall be put to death. Now look, everybody's supposed to be here on a Sabbath, don't they? Because this is what the Lord commanded. He ain't saying, well, you know, you want to choose Sunday, then you can choose Sunday, or you can choose uh, the Sabbath. He didn't make any give you no choice. He just said, you know what? This is the day that I command you to be here, the Sabbath day. So everybody's supposed to be here on the Sabbath day. Go ahead and read though. Verse 3. Uh-huh. Ye shall kindle no fire throughout your habitations upon the Sabbath day. And Moses spake unto all the congregation of the children of Israel. And that's what I'm trying to get you to see. That we all are the congregation of Israel. In fact, that's what our name really is supposed to be. All our churches should be called the congregation of Israel. Because that's what we are. No matter if you got a brother on the south side, you got a brother in Detroit, you understand? You got a brother in Michigan, wherever. Our name is supposed to be the congregation of Israel because we're going to show you we are one body, which is one church. The congregation of Israel. Read verse 4 again. Then Moses spake unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, Uh huh. This is the thing which the Lord commanded, saying. Now, this is the thing which the Lord commanded. Like the Sabbath day, he commanded that. So the congregation of Israel, we are supposed to be here on the Sabbath. We're supposed to be here on the Sabbath. And I know sometimes you might look around and say, well, man, we ain't got that many people. Now, just hold on. Just wait. Just be patient because God is going to get the increase. You know, I was just talking to my, uh, my, one of my elder brothers. You know, he had moved down to Alabama 10, 15 years ago. And so he wanted to start a class down there. But the people wouldn't come together. Do you know after 10, 15 years, the people just now started to come together down there? I said, man, uh, I remember when you first went down there, you were trying to start the class down there. He said, yep. I said, how long has it been now? He said, about 15 years now. And they just starting to come together. We only been in church for about five years now. So it's going to come together in, in God's time. I remember when it started the church up down in uh, 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 Evansville, Indiana. It wasn't nothing but a few of us coming. Two families, me and my reader, and maybe another brother for driving. For a long time. Do you know that church has just started growing? The church has just started growing. Milwaukee, went up to Milwaukee, started a church up there. Took a long time. It was just about uh, seven or eight of us for a long time. We moved from the Y to a building that we started renting. Now they own a building up there now. But it took some years, though. So work had to be put in for the church to grow. So work had to be put in. And that's what I'm saying today, that some work's got to be put in for the church to grow. And remember that you're not working for men, you are working for God. Let's go now. What verse you stopped at? Verse 4? Four? 4. Let's go now. Let's go to, uh, let's go to 1 Chronicles, the 28th chapter. 1 Chronicles, the 28th chapter. And this thing should be, it's, this is a lifelong thing here. This is a lifelong service here. A lifelong service. I just tell a brother the other day, look, man, I'm going to, because he, you know, keeps saying, well, you know, you're changing, brother, you're changing. I'm not changing to come over to that Sunday Christianity. I'm not changing to do that. I told him, man, I'm going to die in this. I'm going to die in this word. And I'm not going to die doing that Sunday Christian worship. That, I'm not talking about nobody. If that's what you want to do, then that's fine. Whatever you want to do. But I'm going to die in this. 
Let's move on to 1 Chronicles 28. And I believe in what I'm doing when I come here on the Sabbath. I believe this. 1 Chronicles 28 and 2. 1 Chronicles 28 and 2. And I believe in the Lord God of Israel. 1 Chronicles 28 and 2. Go ahead and read. Then David the king stood up upon his feet uh -huh. and said, Hear me, my brethren and my people. Go ahead. As for me, I had in my heart to build a house of rest for the ark of the covenant of the Lord uh -huh. and for the footstool of our God and had made ready for the building. See, and had made ready for the building. Now, he had to he make it ready for the building. Yeah, that means he got to have some workers, don't he? Go ahead and read. Verse 3. But God said unto me, Thou shalt not build a house for my name, uh -huh. because thou hast been a man of war, Go ahead. and hast shed blood. Howbeit the Lord God of Israel chose me before all the house of my father to be king over Israel forever. Uh -huh. For he hath chosen Judah to be the ruler, and of the house of Judah, the house of my father, and among the sons of my father, he liked me to make me king over all Israel. Uh -huh. And of all my sons, for the Lord hath given me many sons. He hath chosen Solomon, he, my son. He hath chosen Solomon, my son. Go ahead. To sit upon the throne of the kingdom of the Lord over Israel. Uh-huh. And he said unto me, Solomon, thy son, he shall build my house and my court. He shall build my house and my court. Now, Solomon had to have some workers to do this, don't he? You got to have some stone workers, some uh, iron workers. You understand? Uh, somebody to uh, put together the measurements and all of this, right? Somebody, laborers. He had to have all of this, don't he? Because they get ready to build the house of the Lord. And that's what, that's what I'm liking us to. We are building the house of the Lord, so we need laborers, don't we? Go ahead and read. For I have chosen him to be my son, uh -huh. and I will be his father. Go ahead. Moreover, I will establish his kingdom forever. If he be constant to do my commandments and my judgments, as at this day, now therefore in the sight of all Israel, the congregation of the Lord. The con now Israel is what? The congregation of the Lord. Yes, sir. And that's what we are. We are the congregation of the Lord. We're not just talking about no any God. We're talking about the God. The true and living God. And we are the congregation of the Lord. Go ahead and read. And in the audience of our God, uh -huh. keep and seek for all the commandments of the Lord your God. And not just us being the congregation of God, all the churches like us are, are the congregation of God. We are the congregation of God. Here it is that we got all this knowledge that the Lord has given us, right? But we lacking some things, and I'm going to show you the things that we lacking. But we still the congregation of the Lord, though. Just because you got your church over there, he got his church over here and his church over there, we still one body. Read that verse 8 again. Verse 8. Uh-huh. Now therefore in the sight of all Israel, the congregation of the Lord, and in the audience of our God, keep and seek for all the commandments of the Lord your God, uh -huh. that ye may possess this, this good land and leave it for an inheritance for your children after you. Forever. So, because that's what they're, that's what they're supposed to do. That land is supposed to be in ours. We're supposed to be sitting in that land now. That's what the plan was. But God's gonna bring us back to our land one day. But until then, we gotta labor here in this land. Let's go now. Let's go to Haggai. Haggai, the first chapter. Haggai, the first chapter. And Haggai is right by Zephyr, right at the. Uh, Zephaniah. <clears throat> In between Zephaniah and Zechariah. Okay, we had Haggai 1, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Haggai 1 and 1. Go ahead and read it. In the second year of Darius the king, in the sixth month, in the first day of the month, uh -huh. came the word of the Lord by Haggai. The prophet unto Zerubbabel, uh -huh. the son of Shelatel, governor of Judah, and Joshua, the son of Josedek. Uh -huh. So now we got two brothers we're dealing right here, right? 
three brothers, Zerubbabel too. We got Haggai, Zerubbabel, and uh, uh, um, and uh, uh, who do you say, Joshua? Josh. Go ahead and read. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And to Joshua the son of Josedek, the high priest, saying, Uh huh. The, thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, This people say, The time is not come, uh -huh. the time that the Lord's house should be built. So they say, The time is not come, that the Lord's house should not be built. But skip down to verse 12. Skip down to verse 12. Go ahead and read. Then Zerubbabel, the son of Shatiel, the and Joshua, the son of Josedek, uh -huh. and the high priest, with all the remnant of the people, obeyed the voice of the Lord their God. Uh -huh. Now we got the people with them now. They obeyed the voice of the Lord their God. Go ahead. And the words of Haggai, the, pro the prophet, as the Lord their God has sent him. Uh -huh. And the people did fear before the Lord. And the people did fear before the Lord. What did he say? Go ahead. Then spake Haggai. The Lord's messenger and the Lord's message unto the people, uh -huh. saying, I am with you, said the Lord. Go ahead. Now look what the Lord said. I am with you. This is what the Lord is telling Haggai and, uh, and the people and Zerubbabel and Joshua. I am with you. Go ahead and read. 14. Uh-huh. And the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, See, the son of Shalitim. Now, now, now look what the Lord did. He stirred up his spirit. He stirred up his spirit. The Lord moved a uh, mood on on uh, uh, on uh, uh, Haggai here. Go ahead and read. I'm sorry, it's a rumor bell. Go ahead. Yes, sir. The Lord stirred up his spirit. Go ahead and read. We'll show you what it means when he says stirred up his spirit. Go ahead and read. And the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, uh -huh. governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, the son of Joseph. Now he done stirred up the spirit on Joshua too. Meaning, you know what? He get ready for them. He get ready to. He stirred him up to do a job. Cause you know the Lord, He'll stir you up to do a job. You don't even know what's going on. Next thing you know, you working for the Lord. Cause that's what happened to me. Brother started leaving the church that I was going to, and I just went up to the pastor and said, "Man, you want me to start doing something?" He said, "Yeah, I got a job for you to do." The Lord had moved on me. But go ahead and read. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The governor of Judah and the spirit of Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest. Uh huh. And the spirit of all the remnant of the people. Now look here, the, the, the Lord, he moved his spirit on all the people too. See, you, you, you know, when the Lord moved his, moved his spirit on you, can't nobody stop that. Can't nobody stop that. Men shouldn't try to interfere with that when God put his spirit on somebody and moved them to do something. Men shouldn't interfere with that. You know, because really, uh, the, 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 all of us working for God. All of us, including the pastor. But go ahead and read. And they came and did work in the house of the Lord. Oh, host. you see what they did? They came and did work in the, in the Lord's house. They came and did work in the Lord's house. Because why? Because there is work that has to be done in the Lord's house. Whatever the Lord gives you to do. Read that verse again. I'm sorry. Read that again. 14. Uh-huh. And the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, the son of, Je Je the son of Shealtiel, uh -huh. governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, the son of Josedek, uh -huh. the high priest. Go ahead. And the spirit of all the remnant of the people. And they came and did work in the house of the Lord of hosts, their God. Uh-huh. In the four and twentieth day of the sixth month. In the second year, Darius the king. So now the Lord stirred up Joshua, uh, uh, Zerubbabel, and Haggai along with the people to do work in the house of the Lord. And that's what's going on. That's what needs to be going on here. You understand? We need to do work in the house of the Lord. And I guess the Lord moving his spirit on me now to tell y'all that we need to be doing some work in the house of the Lord. All of us need to be passing out pamphlets. All of us. Yeah, we got to do the work of the of evangelists, but all of us got to do work in the house of the Lord. Let's go now. Let's go to uh, Judges, the 13th chapter. Judges, the 13th chapter. Let me show you what he means when he said the Spirit of the Lord uh, came upon them. Joshua, I mean, Judges, the uh, 13th chapter. Judges 13. The Spirit of the Lord came upon them. 
Judges 13 and 24. Judges 13 and 24. Go ahead and read it. And the woman bare a son and called his name Samson. Uh huh. Now, this is uh, uh, Samson's mother. Now, she didn't have him. She called his name Samson. Go ahead. And the child grew. Uh huh. And the Lord blessed him. Uh huh. And the Spirit of the Lord became, began to move him at times See, in the camp. The Spirit of the Lord began to move him at times in the camp. You understand? Lord put his Spirit on you. You're going to do what he, what he wants you to do. And the Spirit of the Lord began to move him at times in the camp of Dan. Go ahead. And the Spirit of the Lord began to move him at times in the camp of Dan uh -huh. between Zara and Ashtoreth. See, when you, when you come to class and then you say, well, you know what, well, I'm going to ask him, can I do this? Or I'm going to ask him, can I do that? That's the Spirit of the Lord moving upon you. He is moving you to do things in the church. He is moving you. Now look. So it's no man ain't got no business getting in between that then, do he? No man ain't got no business getting in between that. The Lord move you to do something. No matter what camp is at. Just because, you know, you got brothers uh, going in Chicago. If they come here to do some work, then God has moved them to come and do some work. Otherwise, why would they come all the way from Chicago and they got a church in Chicago? You understand what I'm saying? Amen. You can't stand in the way of some brother because God had moved him to do something and to help somebody else in the church. In the church. Because we all are one body, aren't we? Let's go to Isaiah, the 66th chapter. Isaiah 66. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Isaiah 66 and 1. Because the Lord is looking for all, for all of us to do, uh, do work. For all of us. If God is working and Jesus is working, we're supposed to be working too then, don't we? Amen. We are supposed to be out trying to get souls or save souls. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Whatever it takes. Look, you got secretary. You got the uh, minister of music. You understand? You got the reader. You got the pastor. You got all these different jobs to do in the church. And more. And more. And no man should be standing in the way of God's uh, uh, putting his spirit on somebody or moving somebody to do something. Nobody should stand in the way. Isaiah 60 said, don't get me wrong now. If you got a job in the church already, that don't mean you neglect your job to go do a, somebody, a job in somebody else's church. Or somebody else's camp. I'm not saying that. If you got a job to do, then you you uh, vow, because we're going to show you that too, you vow to do a job, then you do that. Even in here, you vow to do a job up in here, then you're supposed to do it. And a little that you know, we all have made a vow once we said the, the, the Lord our God. And we said all that you do, Lord, we, uh, all that you say we're going to do is be obedient. We're in Isaiah 66 and 1. Isaiah 66 and 1. Go ahead and read it. Thus said the Lord, the heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that ye built unto me? He said, where is the house that you built unto me? Go ahead and read. And where is the place of my rest? Uh-huh. For all those things have mine hand made. But he didn't come down here and start building no houses, did he? He had men to build these houses, didn't we? We just seen Solomon going to build the house of the Lord, didn't we? If we, could, if we could have went back to Moses, Moses and them reared, reared up the tabernacles of the tent. It was, it was called the tabernacle. Men had to do They had to go make the parts for it, go make the tent, go make the rings, go make the poles, everything. Men had to make them. Work had to be done. Go ahead and read. For all those things have my hand made, uh -huh. and all those things have been, See, said the Lord. He said, all those things have my hand made, and all things have been. But he didn't come down here and build a house with his own hands. He took man's hands to do this, didn't he? Amen. Go ahead and read. But to this man will I look. He said, but to this man will I look. Because that's who he's looking to build his house up. Men. He's looking for men to do this. 
to do the work in his house. Finish that. Even to him that is poor and of contrite spirit and tremble at my word. Uh-huh. So now he said, I'm looking up to this man because he is the one that has to do the work in the house of the Lord. And nobody should be trying to stop him. Nobody. Because he's not working for man, you working for God. That's who you're working for. Let's go now. Let's go to Matthew the 16th chapter. Matthew 16. Like I said earlier, I'm not trying to come down on nobody or nothing like that. I don't have nothing against nobody. We do work for another church. All we do work for another church still. Been doing it ever since we've been a church. And we still do work for another church. Why? Because we all are the church. This thing is bigger than all of us. And it's one body, which is a church. And, it, and it's bigger than all of us. All of us, for, all of us working for God. Matthew 16 and 13. Matthew 16 and 13. It ain't about me. It ain't about Israel's church of living God. It ain't about uh, the house of Jacob, the Israel. It ain't about it. It's about God. That's who it's about. And working for him. Matthew 16, and we're going to pick it up at verse 13. Matthew 16 and 13. Go ahead and read it. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea of Philippi, uh -huh. he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Uh -huh. And they say, said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, uh -huh. or one of the prophets. Go ahead. He said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? Uh -huh. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ the Son of the living God. Uh -huh. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Uh -huh. And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. He said, you know what? Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. He is a rock, ain't he? Yeah. He said, look, upon me I will build this church. But you know what? Jesus couldn't do it by himself, could he? I mean, he could have. I mean, he's a, uh, a son of God. He could have, but he didn't, though, did he? He had his, excuse me, he had his apostles and his disciples to build up his church. He had his, he had men to build his church. But go ahead and read, though. Yes, sir. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And the it. gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Because the church of the Lord has been going on since, since uh, for, for almost 2,000 years. And beyond that, too, though. But when you get down to the first century, this church that Jesus said, <coughs> upon this rock I'm going to build my church, it's been going on for almost 2,000 years. And the gates of hell are not going to prevail against it. In all generations, we have had this, Jesus had his church. And his word has been through all generations. You better read that book. Say his word is to all generations. And somebody been building this church for all generations. Go ahead and read it. 19. Uh-huh. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Uh-huh. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Look at what he's telling his disciples now. He said, what's up? He's telling Peter now. What, what, whatsoever, because he told the disciples this too. He said, whatsoever thou bound on earth shall be bound in earth, and whatsoever thou bound in heaven shall be bound in heaven. Go ahead. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall uh -huh. be loosed in heaven. Uh-huh. Then charge he. Okay, so now we're going to stop right there. Mm -hmm. We're going to stop right there. But you see now, he said, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. Upon him, because Christ is the head of the church, ain't he? Just he is so. the head of the church. Ain't no man, no head of no church. You understand what I'm saying? The book, talk, the book tells us, look, don't practice lordship over your brethren. Don't practice lordship over your brethren. The Gentiles do that. He said, but look, you Israel, you don't practice lordship over your brethren. So if God move a man, a brother to do something, if he going off to another camp, then he going off to another, we still all the church, aren't we? We still the church. Let's go now. 
Let's go to uh, Luke, the 10th chapter. Luke 10. We need to remember this. And you know, I remember my brother used to say, he, he passed away. He used to say all the time, hey, Brother Rodney, uh, you know, sometimes I feel there ain't no love in Israel. I'm like, what? He's like, yeah. He said, I, I feel there ain't no love. And he said, all those other churches, they got love in their churches, man. They got camaraderie. They got brotherhood. What's wrong with our church? What's wrong with our church? Well, we don't have no love towards one another like uh, the other. And we got the we, Lord has given us the understanding. But that's one thing that we have been lacking in Israel. We had Luke. And we're going to pick it up at uh, Luke 10 and 1. Luke 10 and 1. And we need to take a look at that, man. You know, I remember I say, you know, let us get all to get together and have a feast together. You know, all the, all the houses get, to get, get together and have a feast of Pentecost together. Brother said, no, we not, that ain't going to never happen. I'm like, what? So I kind of like left that alone. Well, I, I, I wish before I died that I could see that all Israel having a feast together. Ain't been a feast like that in thousands of years. Thousands of years. And that would be, I know that that would please the Lord. That would be a sight to see for all of us to get together and have a feast together. All of us come together on one accord and be brethren like we're supposed to be. Like God want us to be. But anyway, we had Luke 10, and we're going to pick it up in verse 1. Luke 10 and 1. Go ahead and read it. After these things, the Lord appointed other 70 also, uh -huh. and sent them two and two before his face into every city and place, uh -huh. whether he himself would come. Go ahead. Therefore said he unto them, the harvest truly is great, uh -huh. but the laborers are few. See, it's always been like this. It's always been the harvest is great. I Meaning there's a lot of people in Israel, but the laborers are few. Now why is that? The laborers are few. Why is it that brothers don't want to labor and sisters don't want to labor? Why? When you laboring for God, this is the best job you can do. Is <laughs> to labor for God. He said, look, the harvest is great, but the laborers are few. Go ahead and read. Yes, sir. Says the harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Uh -huh. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the, of the harvest. Uh, wait a minute. He the, who the Lord of the harvest? That's God, ain't it? Yes, sir. He the Lord of the harvest. Go ahead and read. That he would send forth laborers into his harvest. Uh, that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. Because that's what we need in Israel. We need laborers, don't we? We got this whole... It was 7.2 billion people on the planet. And it's just a few of us. We need to be getting out. We need to get out into the, the harvest. We need to get out into the vineyard more. We need to get out into the vineyard more and do more work, don't we? Mm -hmm. we don't, if we don't do it, who's going to do it? I'd like for us to start it uh, 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 to be, well, I'd like for us to be the biggest camp here in Lake County. And that's what I'm pressing toward. But we need laborers. We need people, don't we? Let's go now. He said, the harvest is great, but the labor of the few. Uh, 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 uh. They pray thee therefore the Lord of harvest that he would send forth laborers into the harvest. And that's what we're praying for, that the Lord sent forth laborers into the heart, not people that's going to sit around and do nothing. Let's go now. Let's go to Matthew, the 21st chapter. Matthew 21. And we all have a job to do. We all supposed to be spreading this gospel. All of us. God has given you his word. He didn't give it to you to hold on to it. He gave you the word to, so that you can share it with everybody. For those who want to hear, you understand, because everybody don't want to hear this. Let's just be real about it. Everybody don't want to hear this. But anyway, we have Matthew 21 and 28. Matthew 21 and 28. Go ahead and read. This is the two sons of the vineyard. Go ahead. But what think ye? A certain man had two sons. Uh-huh. And he came to the first and said, Son. 
Go work today in my vineyard. Go work today in my vineyard. Uh, cause it's you know, cause you know, this is this is really the Lord uh, uh, giving you this parable and everything, but He's likening you to working in His vineyard. Go ahead and read. Twenty nine. Uh huh. He answered and said, "I will not." Uh huh. But afterward, he repented and went. And that's what the ones that have to come and said, you know what, I'm going to do this in the church. Like, you need to repent and start doing it. What you said you was going to do in the church. Go ahead and read. 30. Uh-huh. And he came to the second and said, likewise. And he answered and said, I go, sir, and went not. Whether of them twain did the will of his father. Uh -huh. He said, you know, uh, uh, and he came into the second and said, likewise. And he answered and said, I go, sir, and went not. <laughs> you know, he just pleasing them and everything. Yeah, I'm going to go. But then, but, but turn around and didn't go. Go ahead and read. Because, you know, that's how it is. You know, brothers say they're going to work in the church and say, yeah, I'm going to do it. But then they don't, they don't show up. Or they don't do the work that they say they're going to do. Sisters, too. You understand? Because we all supposed to be working in the house of the Lord, don't we? Amen. Go ahead and read. 31. Uh-huh. Whether well, them twain did the will of his father, uh -huh. they said unto him, the first, Jesus said unto them, uh -huh. Verily I say unto you, that the publicans and the harlots go into the kingdom of God before you. Woo! He said, which one I'm getting will of the Father? He said, look, look the first one. Because he repented and he went back and started working, did he? But the second one, he said, yeah, I'm going to do it, but didn't do it. He said, but barely I said to you that the publicans and the harlots go into the kingdom of God before you. In other words, uh, uh, you say you're a servant of God, you say you're going to do something in the, king, uh, in, in the church, and you don't do it, you don't work in the vineyard like you said you were. You say, you know what? The public is the heart is going to go in the kingdom before you. And that is really something, man. You call yourself a servant of God, and now he's talking about the sinner going to go in there before you? We better get ourselves together, don't we? Come on. We better get ourselves together. Verse 32, what does it say? For John came 